you're listening to the Money Monopolizers Podcast, helping you take control of your financial destiny. It's about time that we invest more in our financial literacy and work towards building generational wealth. If you think you're ready to do the same, then you've come to the right place. Alex, Marlon, y'all ready? Let's get this bread. What's good, everybody? It's Alex Camuño here. We are back with episode 96 of the Money Monopolizers podcast, and I'm here with my co-host, Marlon Walls. Marlon, how you doing today? Doing excellent, man. We officially closed on the house. It closed on it a couple of days ago uh, at the time of this recording, but we um, are already underway with the construction. So um, I, I talked to my contractor. We got the bid already estimated and everything. So we're going to get the staircase put in. We're going to get the, um, kitchen. the kitchen set up and everything. So we're all good to go. And I'll probably be trying to get it listed for rent like within the next couple of weeks. So it's going to start going. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um <laughs> Really because I have or all my stuff is still inside of the garage. And I really I would like to be able to advertise it without necessarily all that being in there. But oh. even still, I, I might just go like probably within like this. Nobody next cares week. how the garage look. <laughs> they, they're going to want to park there. But it oh. really I really could start advertising. So I might just go ahead over there, get some pictures and start getting listed, honestly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's in the very near future. So that, that's coming up quick. I'm excited for that. And the, the, entire, the rent should cover the entire mortgage. So it's going to accomplish what it's supposed to do. So you'll be moving in in August? Yeah, more than likely. I'm trying to do it before we get going on that trip. You think a rehab will be done by then? It's going to be done within a week. Our dude does, I would say within two weeks. I think it should be done, though, by that time, because the guy was already telling me that uh, if we start, so it's going to already have been started by the time this episode airs, but if we start on Monday, it will, uh, we, he should be done by the end of the week with just the um, staircase, and everything else is pretty quick in comparison, just like installing cabinets and uh, changing out a wall and stuff like that. So it's not a, a huge project, but um, the staircase is the big one. Got you. Cool, man. That's dope. I think, um, <clears throat> dang, that dude left a $60 tip. Um, I think that's that's dope because that's going to be, a, you know, a game. I know that's a game changer for you just mentally. So yes, being sir, able to sir. get in there is going to be super substantial for just elevating your mindset in terms of what you just being able to, Cause I tell you, just living alone, not having any distractions, being able to build your business, it's nothing. Nothing beats that, man. Like these last, I've been living. Well, technically, I've been living alone, alone since January 2018. But like living in this house, the house hack, you know, for the last since like, I guess January 2019, December 2018, it's just been like, just be a monk. <laughs> you can do so much. Like it, it, it. Sometimes it sucks. Cause you're just alone all the time, but like <laughs> most of the time, it's it's just more beneficial. So that's dope. Yes, sir. And how about for you overall? I'm doing good. I think uh, it's just I'm happy to uh, be ending in July, getting into August, because we finna go on vacation. So uh, <laughs> that's how you've been looking forward to past three months. Months. man. Since the beginning of the year, <laughs> <laughs> since my you? since my last vacation, since I went to Mexico last year. <laughs> Well, had, I had, look had forward to vacation. What's the next one? I I always look forward to vacations, and I I was supposed to I'm supposed to be going to actually um where are we going? This is in September or October. I'm supposed to be I'm supposed to be going with another friend to I forgot where we're going. I think Morocco. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I don't know if that's gonna happen. We'll see. But I I don't know. I, vacations to me are just that's like my happy place. I love vacations. That's the one thing I don't mind spending a lot of money on. I mean, I, there's a lot of things I don't mind spending a lot of money on that are actually beneficial. Yeah. But, like, a lot of people will look at vacations as, like, a, not a waste of money, but, like, as an, a luxurious item. To me, it's just, like, yo, going on vacation, that's, like, a necessity for me. That's, like, a basic. Like, I have a, a fund for vacations. <laughs> like, that's, like, if I need an asset to cover my vacations. Yeah. Every, like, dang near. Like, yo, my business real estate, whatever. I need something to pay for the vacations because that is very important to me. And I, I, once I'm, you know, at level two financial freedom, we're at level one. Once I'm level two, then that's going to be like, yo, I'm always going to be on vacation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but now I'm, 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 I'm doing good other than that. Business has been good this month. Um, I got so close to 40,000 this month, but not that's quite. It. I don't think you set your goal for 40 before, though. I think you had set it for like 35 or 37. So that you hit that instead of 40. 
honestly, I would have hit it, but I had a lot of like just dumb stuff happened at the end of the month. And it's just like sometimes you can't control it. But I finally got my Austin um branch like solidified. Like I got like a good amount of crews over there now. So okay. now I'm about to really pick up over there. August August could really be big. So I'm 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 excited about August and then the rest of the year because now it's two locations. So sure. And then uh 2022 we coming in Houston. So uh H Town be ready. <laughs> We're gonna expand beyond Texas very soon too. I already know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying I'm trying to take some I'm trying not to go take it too fast because I want to like solidify systems yeah. in, 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 in different locations so that I know like how it should be done when because this is my first time having another location. Like I know how to run one location, but now I need to learn how to run multiple. Facts, and yeah. like the logistics beyond that because if i can do two i can do 50 mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh it ain't no difference just like multiplying and hiring more people all those things so anyways that's just what i've been uh focused on but july good month good month so i, I love the journey of it. i'm not i'm trying not to, not to go too long on this yeah, but yeah. No, i love love the journey of it. at first the longest one is going to probably be establishing your, the first one you had to establish all the systems from from ground zero, That's and right. then once you yeah now you can go to a new location. Now you it's learning again, but it's learning how to operate in another location. You already have the basic operation. Now it's learning how to make sure that everything is running, systems are in place in a separate location. Yeah. Once you've done that, nothing else is truly is different besides the that particular location. Because now you've done the two main the hardest parts is learning how to establish in yours, learning how to establish in another location. Now you do, you can continue to replicate that same process and formula over and over, and <laughs> only that changes from here on out is the location itself. So. Right, right, right. And the thing is, I'm I'm investing so much money back into the business. I'm I'm barely touching anything for myself. Like I'm taking peanuts out of there <laughs> for myself. Um, so it, it it's just a matter of time before you know it really like exponential growth kicks in. So sure. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. But we had an amazing. Yeah. Episode today. Absolutely fantastic, amazing. One of my top five episodes, definitely so far. Um, just of course I'm getting calls. Just based on the fact that, man, this dude is killing, it and he's he he's 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 24 years old, or I'm sorry, 25, 25 now. Old. Yeah, he's he's we're the same age, and uh, he became a millionaire last year at 24, and it's like <clears throat> it motivates me so much because it's just it's just seeing that it's just. Man, it makes me just think about all the possibilities of life. And it's like, man, seeing people that are my age or younger than me do amazing things like that is there's fewer things that actually motivate me than that. <laughs> me personally. So, man, he, and I don't even know where we start in terms of like what he does. He does everything. So it's like he 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 thinks he's 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 complacent. I'll let you talk yeah. about that in a minute. But <laughs> he's doing a lot of stuff. Security engineer, nine to five still. Right, I know it's crazy. Millionaire, he I think he's, he said he made he's already made over a million dollars this year from across all his businesses. He has rental properties, stock portfolio that's worth over a million dollars. Um, he said he has the uh, the uh, the tech business um, or the tech consultations, teaching people how to get in tech through his his tech business. What else am I missing? He said, I know you probably got it written down. <laughs> You know, I'm a note taker at heart, man. That's yeah. what I do all the time. What does but, he do? He got a he got a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> no, like um, I mean, just to keep on adding on to it, um, the car rentals, the um, oh, yeah, YouTube yeah, yeah. branding, the yeah. you know, stuff like that. So oh, he has the he, he has a McNo- McLaurin, and he he yep rented out on Toro, but he bought it for himself. But got, we didn't got even get the BMW, to got the Tesla, like he do a whole bunch of stuff. My thing with because um, I kept on hitting on the fact that he kept that he said I'm, I feel like I'm being complacent. I love that he said that because what it, what that really was showing me was the mi- the mindset of a person that has surrounded himself with the right information and has the mindset of continuous growth. Because most people are going to see this list of things and hear everything that he's doing and be like, man, that's my dream life right there. It is because of where your mind currently is. Once you expand your mindset and say, well, no, once you expand your who you're around and, and start uh, getting around the right the cr- right crowd, especially like if you can be the person that made that's a million dollar a millionaire at 24 and still be the, the brokest person in your circle, yeah. that's when you start saying that man, I'm being complacent because not everybody around me is doing better, and that's where he's currently at. That's why he can say that and it would be true to him. Yeah. And like that's that's very inspirational to me because that just shows the power of the environment and the power of the people that can uh, or the, the power of 
your mentality when you surround yourself with the right people. And that's why I continue to preach environment, surround yourself with the right people, getting out of your hometown, stuff like that, because the people that are around are if the people around you are not necessarily elevating themselves and and they're not uh, ahead of you as far as like your goals and aspirations, then that's going to limit you and your belief in what you think you should be doing to um, or trying to achieve. And so I just I just for most people. So I, I just love that mentality that he had and he's doing a, he's killing it on several aspects of life. And I feel like he's only getting started, too. Yeah, man. Twenty five years old millionaire. Come on, man. It's exponential growth at this time. Just wait till he's. 35 oh my Come god on. it's exactly. gonna be a scary sight so <laughs> we're just happy to uh you know have him on here and and you know get to network with these kind of people man so it, it a great great episode y'all really this was a longer a little bit of a longer episode than we usually try to keep them but this was absolutely amazing so many so many gems dropped in here and it was just amazing all throughout so stay tuned to the end yo uh one thing too <laughs> gotta say it early I always forget this to the end now nah, i ain't gonna forget I don't know what y'all doing with the ratings <laughs> and not rating the podcast, but that's man disrespectful. <laughs> Why are we at 181 <laughs> ratings only? Like that, we getting all these new listeners. For sure. And we at 181. So what I need y'all to do is pause the episode right now. I'll stop. I'll stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop it. Scroll to open Apple Podcasts. If you don't have an if you are listening on Spotify, go to your computer and get on iTunes. <laughs> Search Money Monopolizers. Scroll down and rate us. Rate us five stars, preferably. Um, because, you know, I need you all to feed my ego. No, I'm playing. I just need we need this to actually help with the algorithm. So um, that's going to help us you know, rank higher in it. I don't even know if it does, but I like to see the ratings, man. We need them. It motivates us to keep, it motivates me to keep going, seeing new ratings, seeing what, seeing feedback. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into the actual episode. What's good, Tay? How you doing today, bro? I'm doing good, man. How you, how yourself? How you, how you doing? Man, we doing good. Happy to have you on the podcast, man. Um, I know we had met you out in Dallas a few weeks ago, so, you know, it was, it was, it was, a. Uh, uh, interesting way to meet somebody for the first time, <laughs> for but sure. uh, nonetheless, you know, networking, that's that's the name of the game, getting it done to, you know, gain new connections and get more guests on the podcast. That's what you got to do, wherever, where, regardless of where you meet people. We're not going to say where we met, but, you know, <laughs> but uh, man, we, we really want to get into a lot of your story. First of all, though, before we do get into that, Marlon, do you know who he looks like? Um, <laughs> hold on. No, I, I did think he looked like somebody, you know, think somebody from Pearland, right? No, 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 no. No, really? No. <laughs> I don't know. Who, who are you thinking? He looks like Woody McClain. So <laughs> Oh <laughs> That's 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 the dude from Power Book Two. Yeah. <laughs> man, he looks just like this. Nah, man. somebody just put that on Twitter. Uh, who was that? This? I think Josh. I think Josh said that. I could be wrong, but I think no, it was Brian. Brian, oh, Brian. did it. Yeah, oh, the infamous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can see it. I Bro, you see look it now. just like this man. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. Oh, no, no, but if if anyone is watching on YouTube, then they could probably definitely agree. Um, so, <laughs> but yeah, man, I I like I said, I want to get into you know a lot of your stories. So, okay, really, how we start the podcast, we usually just get into the background of the guests, really just like you know um, learning how you grew up with money and kind of what your 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 perspective and what you were taught about money and kind of how you got to just an overview of how you got to where you are today, what you were doing when you were 18 and kind of, you know, what you're doing now. And then we'll dive into everything else after that. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. So if you could, if you could, if you could just start like, you know, from the, I guess, you know, when you was a child growing up and, you know, mm -hmm. kind of transitions to now, then we go from okay. there. Yeah. So, um, most people don't know this or well, probably now they do. Um, we I come from a single family, um, household, um, don't come for money whatsoever. Um, my mama, she did at the time. Well, she do still now. She had a hair salon. Um, so she had her own business. So I was kind of always raised around like the entrepreneur life and things like that. Um, I kind of always seen her working multiple jobs at a time, trying to take care of me and things like that. So, I mean, I never went without, but I didn't just have like a ton of money. Like I, we had just enough to like, you know, set their food, lights, things like that. Um, you know, whenever we did have leftovers or extras, things like that, you know, she'll probably give me gifts and things like here, but I didn't, I, I wasn't raised, um, you know, with money whatsoever. And so basically with me, um, 
this time we never really like when we did have leftovers but we didn't just have like a ton of leftover money like i was always i was into shoes and things like that in high school and with my mom she was like well i'm not spending over 100 dollars for some shoes and, you know at the time that's your jordans everything yeah. was popping when jordan used to be 150 dollars now they're 220. <laughs> <laughs> so um i was like okay cool like she said she only gonna give me 100 so uh i was like all right babe, cool i'm gonna take that 100 and i'm probably gonna sell a couple things that's um right here in my you know in my room things like that sell a couple games take it to GameStop, and i'm gonna get the rest of it and i'm put with it and i'm buy some shoes and so the first pair of shoes that I ended up buying, so I was on this page, like uh, this when I first got into like sneaker reselling and things like that. Um, I had bought some red phone posits for about $165, $75, I think. And so the sell of uh, the soles, like that was like really yellow. I had to um, like ice the soles, get them back into like, you know, resale shape and things like that. And I think I flipped the shoes for like $240, $250 um, around that time. And so when I did that, I started flipping. I was like, oh, it's not like, I just, you know, I just put a little break to the shoe, did this. I made $50 just off a of flip, like 67 Yeah. How so old like, were you when you were doing that? Uh, I was like in 10th, 19th grade, oh, like 10th grade. So about was like 15, 16. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. So when I saw that, I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip a couple more shoes. I'm going to keep doing this right here. And I'm just going to really, really get involved into the community and you know i'm that's how i make my money so i started flipping shoes and then around this time nike had this competition for the nike uh paranormal phones um and i end up you know it's like sent a weird picture as a kid and i sent one it was like i was sitting down in baloney with like a chain on or something like that and i wanted a pair of shoes and i seen what that was reselling for and i was like resale so i resold them and after that, I just like I really just started getting plugged in. Then I started into like the sneaker box and things like that. So like I would start flipping shoes so much. Like that's how I started making my own money. Like I was putting money to the side. Like I was putting like because I had a bank account since like ninth, tenth grade around the time. So I was just always putting money like in my savings. I'm like I don't have to do anything. And my mom wasn't type of person like oh well you have to pay bills and stuff like that. She wasn't like she was like no you know she didn't even want me working for <laughs> for the most part. So 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 your so your mom was because you know. Especially in a lot of black households, it'd be like, "Yo, you you make money," and then your mom's like, "Yo, let me hold that for you. I'm 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 gonna keep yeah. that. I'm gonna keep that. That, <laughs> no, wasn't, mom, that wasn't your mom." Like, yeah, nah, she wasn't like that. Uh, she she really, cause the thing was like, I really like I love mom. She worked so hard, and it was just like, I don't want you like just focus on school, focus on sports, don't worry about anything else. I take care of it, and I didn't really realize like how good I had it, you know, with that, cause like a lot of parents just like that. It's like, oh no, I'm gonna hold your money. I'm gonna do this. But mama, she started noticing I was flipping shoes and I was like, I was having all this cash. She was like, you need to get a bank account. And so we, um, she opened a bank account, you know, to, uh, as a minor and things like that. You got to have like your parent or something like that open a bank account for you. And so I just started like really saving all of my money. And uh, I was like, cool. Like started doing that. I bought my first car doing that. Um, and then I kind of started getting to invest and that's when I started getting to the stock market and stuff like this. Um, this at the time you had to start paying for like transactions stuff like that so i had been buying stocks since i was 18. like i didn't really know i didn't know what i was doing i just know like hey like i see you can make money in the stock market so i was just putting money in there just like sitting there hold and hold so i think like after like high school i think i had about eight maybe nine thousand dollars in the stock market Wow. And it was just all from flipping shoes. Like, so, yeah, so it was really. I, I mean, there's a backstory with this too, though. Like, you get into the, you, you don't just see the stock market and be like, you know what? I know how to invest in that. Let me just go and start putting money in there. So, like, <laughs> what, what kind of story was there around that? Like, how did you so, learn and get into the stock market? So, me, I've always kind of been into like the YouTuber and stuff like that. Like, cause I noticed, like, I had started getting like all this money. Like, I had no clue, like, anything about money. Like, I was obviously kind of blowing, buying shoes and stuff like that. And so I was just like Googling stuff like, how can I make money without working? How can I do this? How can I do that? And so I saw real estate, but I, I had no clue about real estate. I didn't really get into real estate until like maybe a year or two ago. I was like, uh, at the time I'm thinking, I'm like, I can't do that. I can't afford that. And so I was like, you know, how can I do this with a little money? Um, I think I saw something, it was most like stocks and it was something else that I could have done. And I was like, I'm just going to do stocks like I was trying to at first I was trying to learn how to trade and stuff like that and then I lost like $500 like really quick and I was like okay I'm just going to sit here I'm just going to put my money here and I'm just going to let it hold like this is going to do that and like every time I got like a little piece of money like I always take like probably 40 or 50 percent of the profit that I made from my shoes and I go ahead and dump it into the stock market 
And so I had did that all throughout college because, again, I was running track in college, so I, could, I couldn't get a job, you know, running track in college. It is a full time job. <laughs> so any sport for that matter. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I started flipping shoes. I was still flipping shoes in college and stuff like that, which pretty much, you know, helped me like, you know, buy my clothes, like food and stuff like that. And so at the time, I never really thought about going the entrepreneurship route. It was just always like, oh, well, I'm flipping shoes, get money, and I'm able to put money to the side and do this. And, you know, I don't really have to do too much work to, you know, actually make this money. So I started doing that. And um, I originally wanted to go to school for, I want to be a lawyer. Um, so uh, my freshman year, I was going to like these classes. And I, well, I would actually wasn't going to class for that because I was always tired. And it was just like, man, like this, this is going, this isn't going to go too well for me. So I think at the end of my freshman semester, I had like a 1.7 GPA. Dang, what school? Yeah, uh, University of Mobile in Alabama. Oh, okay, got you. Yeah. So I had like a 1.7 GPA and uh, my coach was like, well, uh, you can't run in the fall. You got to get your GPA up. So I was like, well, I've had to transfer schools anyway. So I, I already had in my mind that I was going to be transferring schools. I had planned on moving to Texas. Um, I mean, my brothers and stuff, they move by here. They live by here and I was, like trying to get a better relationship with them. So I like, I'll move out here, um, go to school, try to go to school out here, do this. And so um, I was actually talking with a couple of the coaches out here for track. And um, I was talking with TCU, UTA, and I believe Commerce, Texas A&M Commerce. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I was pretty much talking with them. Um, at the time, I was also training for the Junior Olympics, and I ended up tearing my M uh, MCL and meniscus. So not only was my bag, my grades bad at the time, too, but now I also had this right injury. There. Yeah, and coach at that point, coach is like, we're not really touching him or anything like that because it's – Two liabilities, and I completely understand it's a business decision. So I decided to go in and roll into um, a community college called Tarrant County Community College in Arlington, Texas. And so um, that's when I really first started getting into like the computers and everything like that. It was my professor and Professor Gaines. I never forget his name. He wanted to introduce me to everything tech and like, cause like in high school, I used to, oh yeah, so I used to fix phones and stuff like that in high school as well too. So I used to have fixed phones, jailbreak phones, and all of that. So I did that along with the uh, reselling shoes. And so I was always kind of like familiar with like you know taking stuff apart and stuff like that. But I actually didn't know like the intricates or the actual like the greasy part of like the tech industry actually learning like you know networking security programming i didn't really know anything about that until i came to college my second year my sophomore year of college and so he was just telling me he was like yeah like you know like people actually pay you know you to hack their systems and find vulnerabilities for them and i was like bro you lying like i see people on the internet all the time going to jail for this and you telling me people get paid for this and so when he told me that, I just started doing so much research. It was just like research. Like I was standing up at five, six o'clock in the morning. Like I catch myself, I'm like, oh, it's not like the sun, the sun rising. <laughs> and so I was just like, all right, cool. And um, so I just really started falling in love with it. And like pretty much that's where everything started at. <laughs> so so and we'll, we'll, we'll pick it up from there, but I want us uh -huh. to get into some of the stuff that you talked about, because what I could really tell about you just from hearing your story is that you were you are you were always and you are very inquisitive just yeah. in general. Like you were always very curious or just like thinking about how things work, why things were the way they were. I mean, the reason <laughs> I know that is because I can relate to that a lot, because when I was um, like a similar age and that kind of thing, too, it was always something where it's like because you talked about like, you know, how you were. You know, taking apart computers and fixing phones and stuff. I was doing a lot of those same things too at that time. Like, you know, just trying to figure out how things work, right? And then I'm, you know, you go on YouTube. This is when YouTube was like still like new. So yeah, it was, it was like, new. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like a lot of stuff out there. But it's like you find what you find, and then you learn about something, and it's just like, oh, oh and then you saying like you stand up till five, six a.m. Once you find something that you're actually interested in, like that's just kind of how that kind of stuff works. And what you really see with a lot of those people that are super inquisitive. Those I'm not saying it's always the case, but those mm -hmm. people typically do really well in life because they always question things as they are and things as that things that are presented to them. It's like, mm, why would I do it like that? As opposed <laughs> exactly. to when I'm thinking like in because you think about things and you just process things differently in, in, in terms of it being normal. It's like that doesn't seem really normal. Like, oh, get a job, work, you know, work 40 years, retire when I'm 65. That just doesn't mm -hmm. feel right. Right. It doesn't at all. <laughs> even just and when you say it to yourself, it, it don't even sound right. 
Yeah. Like I'm gonna work here for 40 years and hopefully I get a pension and hopefully I have enough money to retire. Like what? Like it's and at that, that point, it, yeah, it's not like at this point you have a fixed income. So it's like what happens if I live longer than you know yeah. the expected living life now I'm broke. And yeah, it, 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 that just never really sat right with me. And then first also like kind of just seeing my mom work multiple jobs, you know, kind of struggle here and there. And so that's, and that's the thing too, as well too, like, cause like we didn't have like a lot of money. So it's like money management, things like that. I didn't have to learn it. Like we used we was living paycheck to paycheck basically. And yeah. so it was like, I, I don't have to manage money. I just know I have to pay bills here. Hopefully I have enough and go over here. And I was just like, man, this like this is crazy. Like I, I didn't really like when you just kind of think about it when you get older, it was like, wow, like she did she did a lot. Like she really worked her ass off, like two, three jobs at a time, yeah. just to make to paycheck to paycheck, just like, oh, okay, Christmas coming up. Let me try to get you some gifts. Let me try to do this. And it was just like, man, this is crazy. Like, and that's and she couldn't really teach me a lot about money. But it was one thing that she did teach me, and it was like credit, because um, like you know, growing up, both her parents died when she was like really young, and so she didn't really have anyone teaching her about credit. So her credit ended up um, wasn't the best at the time, and so she was like, "Hey, I don't care what you if you don't learn anything else, make sure you pay everything on time, and make sure your credit is good. Don't co-sign for nobody. Don't do anything for nobody. <laughs> make sure your credit is always good." And that stuck with me for like my credit's always been pretty much good for the most part like just for some fact because she like by her keep she keep she every time she did something she's like don't do this don't do that and she always made sure so that that was one important like takeaway that i did take um from my mom when i was kind of growing up and also just kind of saying like her work ethic seeing her like having to work multiple jobs and even the thing is like i mean that is like overworking yourself and stuff like that but i seen hard work like i know what hard work look like and so with me i just kind of took that hard work but it's like I'm gonna do it in a smarter way, mm-hmm. yeah. and so that's pretty much you know where I get that from for the most part. Like, like I've always been the type to just like let me figure something out, let me read books. Like me personally, I don't like I'm not gonna sit here and say oh I like to really, like read books and things like that. But when it comes to like self improvement, finance, and stuff yeah. like that, yeah. I love those books. <laughs> I probably have maybe 40 books. <laughs> and the Inquisition in you. Yeah. Yeah. And- and I was going to pair those two, too, because one thing I really like about your story is that despite the humble beginnings, what you saw is that you were hungry for a better alternative or a better lifestyle. So that's why back then when you couldn't buy those $150 pair of shoes, you were just kept at 100. You were starting to think of how can I make this happen? Because mm-hmm. the, I, like I was to Alex's point with the thinker and being inquisitive, you start searching for solutions. And th- mm-hmm. now you start uh, you pretty much take what you can find and then you just start being, building something off of that until new information provide uh, is revealed to you. So now you start taking the shoes and start flipping those and see, you see you can make a profit. And now you you are able to start building a whole business off of just flipping shoes all the way up through college. And you said, yeah. even on top of that. <laughs> At some point, the uh, phone repairs obviously came out because you start taking them apart from from that inquisitive mind. Yeah. Now you say, okay, I'm a, I, I, you have a worker mentality based off of seeing your mom. So now I, I'm gonna take this new solution right here and produce, produce another a form of income for myself just by being able to repair phones. So now you have two different ways that you're able to make money just from your inquisition and just your work hard attitude. One the reason I, I said all that though is because what concerns me about like passing down generational wealth is that at some point when like when your kids are going to grow up at a very different environment or very different um lifestyle than you had to grow up in and mm-hmm. it's my concern is that do, will they i wonder will they even have that same type of drive as opposed to somebody who had to figure things out and that's one thing i, I that's just just a side note to something i always think about because yeah. a lot of who you are is because of the drive that you had to have initially coming from a place of lack not having what you um wanted but having to figure out a way to get it that actually continues to drive drive people way longer than just just being every, given everything on a silver platter exactly <laughs> but yeah and, and my thing is i never fault people for like having like you know things passed down and stuff like that because not everyone is like super spoiled in a way and but again i wish i was but in, in <laughs> case i always think i was like if i was kind of handed everything would i be in a situation that i'm in now yeah. and that's why you know like everyone's situation like you're in the, you put in a situation for a reason for a lot of times, like, cause even now I kind of get a little lazy now, um, like complacent. Cause it's just like, I'm doing pretty good. So it's like, 
kind of complacent right now. Um, you know, I still like do the things, but I'm not really looking to like venture onto new things right now. It's just more so like I'm trying to focus on like building what I have now. Like, so when I say complacent and lazy, that's what I mean. I'm like only yeah. focus on what I'm doing right now, and I'm not really trying to venture out to go into anything else new or anything like that. So I guess I wouldn't really call it that complacent, yeah. but it's just more so on the level of like, you just focus. all right, let me focus yeah, on I, this. I, think that's, yeah. <laughs> I don't see any issue with that. I think the focusing yeah. is actually what you should be doing. It's like building something up to the point where it can um, almost run on, on automation, like it can run on its own without you necessarily needing to be there. That's kind of what we do within our businesses as far as what, what we're running. Like for mm -hmm. me with the rental car business, I am focused solely on that to the point where I can start putting automation systems in place, people in place to run mm -hmm. it before I start to branch off into other things. And we talk about that a lot, a lot on the podcast. But one thing mm -hmm. we haven't talked about yet for you is like, what do you... Um, what is what you do currently today? Like, what do you do now and what is it providing for you as far as your lifestyle, as far as um, how you're able to, why you're on the podcast in the first place, basically? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so by day, um, I'm a senior security engineer um, for our startup. Not going to say her name. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah um, I work for a startup um, doing that. I pretty much like manage all of their like security systems, creating automation for like our security analysts. So whereas the security analysts may take 30 minutes to do an investigation. My job is to automate that to where it only maybe now take a minute or two. So um, that's for that. That's what I kind of do there. But on the outside of my businesses, <laughs> so um, I'm also, I mean, Walmart automation. Um, I'm, I'm a real estate investor. I have four rental um, properties right now. Um, one is being rehabbed. Um, what else do I do? I'm in a car rental business now. <laughs> So uh, I rent out my Tesla and uh, my BMW X4, and um, I rent my McLaren out here and there, mostly as props. But sometimes, you know, I, you know, depending on who it is, like, you know, I let them rent it and things like that. Because think about Turo, like on super deluxe cars, stuff like that, certain cars, you have to be 30 plus to rent it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I feel a little bit more comfortable, like with mm -hmm. someone older renting the car. So um, I do that as well too. Um, actually, this moment, my first month doing that, and I think I made from my McLaren alone. I think I made about like six thousand dollars doing that. <laughs> so one car, <laughs> yeah, one one car, car. in one month made six thousand. <laughs> so at this point, the car pretty much pays for itself. Um, I also have my uh, get me in tech business or company. Um, pretty much, I help people get into the uh, the tech industry, and I also have my town tech brand. So that's when I'm doing like any sponsorships or any affiliate links or anything like that. I pretty much funnel that through Tayon Tech. And so I recently just started kind of doing like brand sponsors and stuff like that through the, you know, TikTok. Shout out to TikTok. <laughs> and this so, is you um, being complacent? Uh, <laughs> you just had to ask. You named like five. It, it feels complacent. Man, no, it feels like I should bro. be doing more. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> And so now I'm trying to venture off into like the YouTube world. Like I get a lot of, like I kind of post videos here and there just like, oh, I'm just going to post something. But I, I really notice like people DM me all day long. Hey man, when the next video? Like, you know, when are you going to start doing more video content? So I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to hire me a videographer, an editor, and try to get some content down. And I know with the new apartment that I'm moving into, I have a dedicated YouTube space and stuff like that where I can record and stuff like that. So I'm really, you know, I'm going to really try to, you know, I guess get the inside scoop. I guess people feel like my life is interesting. So, you know, give them the inside scoop of it. <laughs> so um, I think that's pretty much everything that I do right now um, for the most part. Um, aren't also you, do aren't you in the stocks too? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I haven't been trading. <laughs> I'm still complacent, though. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what's happening. We begin sometimes. So, yeah, I haven't traded any of this year, though. So, last year, I was trading really, really heavy. Um, you know, the pandemic. So this is actually when I became uh, like my net worth crossed a million dollars uh, last year. So remember, I had been like buying stocks since I was 18. So yeah. when I first so when I first like around when I got into college or after I graduated from college, I think I had about like seventy five thousand dollars in the stock market at the time. Wow. And so um, at the time, like and that's when I really started like investing, like not started learning how to trade. So. I was doing Forex before Forex became Forex. Yeah. So in college, I was doing Forex and things like that. I was on the Nadex platform. And I don't know, I don't know how the hell I came oh, I don't know how I came across that. And I was just looking, I was like, I was just looking up trading. I just came over Forex. And honestly, I had no clue what I was doing. I kid you not. I put a hundred dollars in there. Um, I was doing like high frequency trading or something like that. I put a hundred dollars in there, and I think I got like four or five hundred dollars in profit. I was like, 
what? <laughs> so I just really like at that point, like I was blindly doing that for about like a month and I was steady winning. I was just like, oh, it's going to go up. It go up. So I was like, I was blindly doing that for like a month before I actually just learned it. And so after that time, I think I had like a big loss. Like I thought I just really started doing it. Like I had a big loss. And I was like, uh, I'm going to step away from this. And I started doing going to crypto. And that's when Bitcoin had like, I was at my internship. And at the time, so all this time, like throughout my what college career, this? I was this is, this is 2017, oh, I think. Man. Yeah, I, I was going to ask that, man. man <laughs> be, yeah, so he, it's perfect storms, but the problem is, the thing I want to mention is that how old are you right now at this point? Uh, I think I was 19 or 20. 19, I was, wait, how old are you 19. today? I'm 25. 25 right now, so, because you because you, you, sli- you casually mentioned across the million dollar mark earlier. <laughs> so, at, like, at 24 years old. Yeah, yeah. 24, yeah, I crossed, I crossed the million mark at 24, yeah. So, I've been saying how it lit up that. I've been saying how it lit up. By the way, that was the part, that was the thing he, he forgot to mention. <laughs> right, <laughs> so I had to ask about it. <laughs> so yeah so um during college so during college i was doing these internships tech internships you get like these huge sign-on bonuses okay. so i was getting like 10 fifteen thousand dollars sign-on bonuses and i was dumping all of them to the stock market or into oh, crypto yeah. so this is when i first got intro- introduced to crypto um it was one of my um and one of the interns i was working with and i think bitcoin is probably like six thousand i could be lying but i think it's like five six thousand dollars whatever it was really low and he was like bro Whatever you do, dump your uh, he was like dump your uh, your sign on bonus and sell Bitcoin. It's gonna go to the moon. It's gonna go to the moon. And in my head, I'm like, I'm young. I'm like, if I lose it, like, what's the worst that can happen? I don't have any responsibility right now. So I threw it in there. It raised up to like, I think nineteen thousand dollars. Like, I think it was like eighteen eighty or eighteen thousand nine hundred something like that. And at the time, I've seen how much it was. I think I had like sixty, fifty or sixty thousand dollars. And I was like, I'm going to pull this. Like, I'm taking all this out and I'm just going to dump it somewhere. Because, like, I, I didn't really, I didn't understand Bitcoin at all. Like, Man. I just knew he, somebody told me to, like, hey, dump it in there. So, How I'm like, did you put oh. in there? Uh, I think I put in about nine or 10,000, I think. Put the whole nine sign-on 10, bonus, basically? Yeah, I put the whole yeah. sign-on bonus, like, completely. Because, you know, they taxed it, like, 40% or something like that. So, uh, yeah, and when I had a ticket out, it was around, like, fifty-eight, fifty-nine thousand dollars $59,000. And I was like, man, cool. I'm dumping all this into the stock market. So I put that in the stock market. So at that time, I think it was like seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. And this is like while I'm still like gra- about to graduate school and go to like my um, – I'm still in school. So by the at way, the time – By the way, what was your GPA in school at this time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. Probably like a two, three, a two. Four. I don't yeah, say school on. series. Come on. Because like my, th- my thing is school, man, because like – I always know, like when it when you're in school or something like that, it was just like I didn't really care as long as I got my work done. Like I I never did homework. Like I never did homework. And that's the crazy part because it's like it was pro- unless you were actually, especially I assume you probably weren't just telling people like yeah, yeah I'm doing all this, I'm doing all this. You know, I got oh, eighty thousand okay, dollars. No. So it's like very unsuspecting, right? Most people would just be like, oh, that's just another dude, right? But yeah. you. They don't recognize kind of what's going on behind the scenes. And the thing is, too, it just goes back. And I hate using cliches. I absolutely hate using cliches. But sometimes it's actually applicable, too, in terms of, like, you know, they talk about the people that get A's, the people that get, you know, those. Yeah. Perfect grades. They typically. Uh, I mean, I don't even I don't even I, I don't want to word this wrong, but it's like. You know, C students typically become the, you know, multimillionaires, you know, those kind of, you know, innovators and the, and, and the, the people that actually become something in the world that's like everybody knows about. Right. Uh-huh. A students, they're really good at following directions and doing yep. those kind of things. So it's like you think you would think you would just and that's the only <laughs> reason I just asked about it, because I was just curious about that. But yeah. what a lot of people won't realize is that the, the fact that you were able to get to where you were was it because a lot of people will hear this and say, like, dang, he just got lucky. He just got lucky. Or like, that was perfect timing. Or that was, oh, my God, perfect storm. Or that was like, man, I wish I would have known about Bitcoin in 2017. I myself. <laughs> right. Right. And it's like, I myself. It, it's that foundation, man. You've been doing this since you was t- 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it was something different back then, but it's just now you get new information, you apply the same mentality, and it's the same. You get a new result, a crazy yeah. result. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, man, it was like 
That, that was the crazy thing about it, yeah. So every time I got like a sign on bonus, I was probably dumping into some type of stock or something. So, and I had like four, four internships, I think. I had four internships and all of them was paying at least, except one. One was paying like $17 an hour, but everything else was paying like $25 plus. And I had no responsibility. My rent was like $700. <laughs> my car note was like 300 and my insurance like 150 so all in all, I had like a thousand dollar expense, and I'm making twenty five, thirty dollars an hour. And so, <laughs> so these are internships. So a lot. That's the thing. Like people see me now, and they just think it just kind of happened overnight. But no, I've been doing this since I was eighteen. So, <laughs> so whenever, um, like, so at the time, like, I'm putting all this, I'm keep putting money into the stock market. So I'm just, well, I was mostly buying like Apple, like pretty much the like Walmart stuff. I was just buying like stuff that I, I mainly buy. Like if I yeah. bought something or if I own something. That was the stock I would buy for the what, most part. What was the first stock you ever bought when you were 18? Do you remember? The first Walmart. It was Walmart. Walmart? It was Dang, Walmart. You, can't, you can't even go wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was Walmart. Because <laughs> like, that's the thing. Like, cause it, cause I was reading an article um, at the time. Like, If people didn't want to get into the stock market, it was basically saying like the products that you use, just buy that stock. Because I, I didn't know anything about stocks at the time. I was just yeah. buying stuff. Like, I didn't even really know how to buy the stock. No, I just, I, I literally, great. like, I got on the, a blog. I was looking, like, how to buy stocks and stuff like that. And it kind of showed in, like, you know, if you're, you know anything about stocks, buy stuff that you normally buy all the time. So I had, like, Walmart, I think McDonald's. Like, at this time, I wasn't really buying tech stocks at all. Like, I didn't, because I wasn't really in that field. I was just buying stuff that the stores I go to all the time. And so I didn't really start really buying tech stocks until I was, like, when I start reckoning, when I start interning and stuff like that, that's when I was like, I'm putting all my money into the uh, like the tech stocks and stuff like that. And so over the time, I was really buying, really buying stocks, really buying stocks. And so when the pandemic happened, this is when everything was crazy. So the pandemic happened, I'm probably close, probably close to a quarter mil at the time. And this and this one, I was really starting to trade. That's when op like, bro. At this time, if you you can just say, hey, a call option, and it was going up like at the time. Like this, well, this was like at last year. So yeah, fast yeah. forward back. So this is actual pandemic. So everything's dropping. Like my friends stuff. They're like, I'm selling my stocks off. Everyone 401k dropping. I'm like, bro, I've been doing this since eight since I was 18, bro. It's going correct. Like the government is not going to let this stuff fail, bro. Keep buying these stocks, bro. Like I've been doing this for so long at the time. So Man. I'm. You know, I, yeah, so I'm 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 kind of used to seeing like how the market moves and stuff like this, but no, no one's ever seen nothing like this. So I was just like, bro, keep mine, keep mine. And at the time, I bought Tesla at like two hundred dollars. So I, this was pre-split. I yeah. started just still selling people, buy, 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 and I ended up selling. I ended up selling Tesla at around like seven hundred dollars, and then they dropped again. And I was like, I'm rebuying it up. So I was just, man, when I say I was buying everything out, like for this, for that whole duration of like COVID and stuff like that, I was literally living off my credit cards. Like I like, I, I was, <laughs> bro, everything. <laughs> I was putting everything in the stock market. Cause it was just like, man, like even like my 401k uh, contributions, I upped that a little bit as well too. So I was literally like, when I say I was living off credit cards, I was living off, like my bank account sometimes went negative because I was buying so much stock. Wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> So I was really like, I was like, you know, I'm a, I'm a risk taker when it comes to that. And so this one, like the market just started like exploding and blowing up. You can buy any option you want it. And it was like, you really didn't need any type of logic for the stock market, anything like that mm -hmm. at the time. And I was just really buying everything, every profit I get, I'm dumping it back into there. And everything shot up. I still remember my um, portfolio hit $1 million, $1 million, $5,000 and like 32 cents or something like that. I still remember it. And I was sitting there, I was like, oh shit, I'm a millionaire. Like I <laughs> I didn't even realize because at the time, like I didn't really have like no, I didn't like I'm like 24. I don't have any responsibility. Like I have my car. It wasn't paid off at the time, but that's the only debt that and my student loans, which I still have. I don't plan on paying them off no time. <laughs> <But> <laughs> so yeah, like I that, that was like all together, that was probably like my car, and that was like sixty thousand dollars. So, you know, we that versus that. And it sees a million dollars. So I'm like, oh snap, like I'm good. And so I started buying like properties and stuff like that. And yeah, man, now I leverage my stock portfolio to like buy real estate investments or any other investments. And I just, yeah, man, it just that's pretty much how it happened. It just happened over time. Like I was really just buying stuff. Like I had a really great time. <laughs> so yeah. And now like everything, like the social media stuff started happening. Um, I was really talking about finance. 
started talking about the tech industry, which led me to create Tay on Tech, which then ultimately led me to create Get Me in Tech. So that that business is doing really well. Like my Tay on Tech brand is doing really well. So it's just like as I started talking about it, like more money and more success just started gravitating towards me. Like now I'm I can really I'm on autopilot right now. Like my name, my brand speaks for itself. So now like um like we even might get me a tech um, program stuff like that i probably haven't actually advertised it in two months and i've been doing really really well <laughs> and i haven't advertised it and i dropped the price by 200 dollars. and i didn't tell them when i dropped the price and nothing i just dropped the price and it's yeah. going crazy so and that just kind of speaks to like my name my brand speaks for itself so the power that's the power of branding as well too like once you kind of like build a solid brand and you know you really like your brand you can really go venture into anything yeah. and still do well to it because it you, yeah you're like i know this person he's really well in this so if he does this as well i know he's going to do good in that too yeah. and so that's kind of like the route i went with that and yeah that's you know after i started like connecting with, like other business people and that's when i started buying watches because i noticed mm-hmm. like a lot of successful people have watches and so I used to go to this bar. I mean, this bar, well, it's, it's a bar, but it's like Moxie's. Moxie's, Happy Hour, yeah, and stuff yeah, yeah. like that. And I started to notice. And I was like, man, everybody got nice watches. And I was like, I'm going to buy one just to see what I can do. And so as I started buying them or whatever, because they also are assets as well, too. Yeah. That's where. And so I started buying them. And, like, I would go to, like, these upscale bars. And I would purposely, like, kind of show my watch. I have a drink or something like that. And I just be holding it right there so they can see it. <laughs> and I know. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was like, oh, that's a nice watch. Uh, like, what do you do? And that's where it pops out. We have a conversation. We exchange converse, um, like information. So me and Xavier, we was actually at Moxie's one day. And um, a guy noticed my watch. And he built skyscrapers. So we exchanged contact. Like, yeah, it, it's crazy. Like, like just, like, having, like, you know, those items and stuff like that. It, man, it's crazy, like, how conversation just kind of sparked. And like at this time, I already wanted a supercar anyways. I was like, okay, I'm making a decent amount of money. I can afford it. If a watch can do this, I know for a fact a car would really kind of put me in that class of like, oh, he's a real serious businessman. Yeah. And little behold, after I bought my McLaren, yeah. I met this guy at a car meet. Um, he just so happened to have an IT company. And he was like, oh, what do you do? He saw my social media and stuff like that. And he was like, ah, so he was like, you really kind of big on social media. I was like, oh, I guess something like that. He was like, yeah, our social media presence suck. I was like, I can help you with that. And this is literally the second day I had the car and I went to a meet. And we exchanged confirmation, stuff like that. Now I do with social media. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, it's it's crazy. Like, it's like it, man, the amount of business, the amount of people you meet is it's really insane. Man, hold on, man. There's so much we got to dive into. <laughs> Uh, cause that honestly, that was that was that that's gonna be the you know the gist of the podcast we're gonna get into. But what <laughs> he's being complacent, though. I just want to <laughs> right, right. right. He's, still, he's still being complacent, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but like, man, your story is just so incredible because, besides the fact that you're 25 years old, man, because, I mean, to accomplish that, because here's the thing. I mean, we're both 25 as well, and mm. we know like what comes with like whenever you are certain because a lot of, I, I feel like a lot of people they don't realize the power in being young doing like things that are like bigger than you know a lot uh, like, like than regular like it doing it's not brand that much better it makes exactly. it so much relatable because oh, i'm 20 i'm i'm young i'm african-american i'm black i'm so it's like damn if he can do it i know for a fact i can exactly. do it too yeah and that's and, and, and that really makes me relatable <laughs> exactly and i saw you tell people like being young is like a, a, a advantage. It's not like a disadvantage at all. Like, yeah. Especially if you are actually doing things that are substantial or not. Even just doing things that are non, like even just having a conversation like this makes you, puts you on another level. And people recognize that. But the biggest thing I really wanted to, t- to talk about, because like you, because you became a millionaire last year, you were at $250,000 mm-hmm. prior to last year. So you were at a quarter mm-hmm. million. So you mm-hmm. probably didn't even like in your head have any, you weren't your goal probably was not to become a mentor in 2020. No. It was no, that, it, it was it, it was honestly man, I didn't think that was gonna happen. So I was like 35, 30, 35. It just yeah. seemed like so hard to reach. But and actually it this this perspective. So this is the thing about me. So I make unrealistic goals all the time with no intentions of actually yeah. completing them. It's just like 
you know, aim for the stars, land on the moon. That's always been my like my whole my whole go around. Like it's like I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna just and at that time I didn't even set any goals. It was just like I just want to make a decent amount of money this year. Made a million. And money. yeah, and it just happened. Like that's the thing. Like people like, and that's why I always tell people like mindset is real. Like that's gonna be like this sets you different from like everyone else. Like my mindset is pretty much there's nothing I can't do. Like I, that's how I feel. Like anything, I, I and if I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. And like I know for this year, so last year I was like, I'm gonna make a million dollars. Like that, cause I have never made like anything close to a million dollars. Like I think my highest gross that I ever made was like probably three hundred or something like that. And this year, at seven months into the year, I'm at one point one million dollar gross for the much the amount of money that I made this year. And my goal was just to make a million dollars like yeah. for the year. And now I'm I'm setting to go to two point five now, cause it's like, shit, if I did that in six months, I know I can do that in a year or something like that. So it's just, I just really, and I really just make unrealistic goals and try my best to complete it. And I complete it. <laughs> and the thing, the reason that you actually became a millionaire is be, I mean, it, it, this is like, like I said, this is not something you actually have, been, like, it's, it, you didn't, just, this just didn't, this just didn't happen. You were been doing mm -hmm. this since you was, you know, a teenager. And then mm -hmm. the, what I love the most about it is, is because while everybody was running, while everybody yeah. was screaming, you know, chicken little, the sky's falling down. You said, yo, I've been doing this for like six years now. Like, I know what I'm actually doing. I'm not following the mask because I actually know what I'm doing. And what mm -hmm. you, I, it just goes back to, man, like, never let a good crisis go to waste yep. because yeah. that right there, so many people probably became a, the people that did what you did, it was a lot. Like, yeah, it was a lot of people. Like, it was a, it's a, it was a lot. I actually just seen a report. I think it was like, Five million millionaires was created this year. Really? I mean, during the pandemic, yeah, five, about million. five million millionaires created. <laughs> yeah, <That's laughs> last year alone, bro. <laughs> just a lot of people. Yeah, and, and and that's just that's just like it's a different mindset mentality that you gotta have. But Marl, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you chime in because I know that he said a lot. That I want you to answer <laughs> something. To yeah, you. man. That's, I mean, we, we spend all day trying to recover everything. But <laughs> one thing I love the most about about all of this is that how unassuming you are with everything. But at the same time, you are always very inquisitive and always studying. Because even earlier, like you just say it so casually that it just comes up to you like <laughs> second nature. But this is the difference maker between you versus anybody else yeah. is that anytime you want to learn these things or you want know more information you're always searching it like you mm -hmm. you talked about earlier how you were searching blogs about stocks and trying to see which stocks to pick and it's trying to figure out how to make sure that you are making the right investment like those little things right there is re truly what separates the people that are making that million dollars because they've done it for a couple years now and now they are able to recognize opportunity when they see it versus people who uh are screaming oh, oh no uh, the stock market's falling down pulling all my money out because they don't have the right information that is the key difference is for one the mentality but second is having the right information Information. You continuously seek the information because you first had the mindset to go find it in the first place. And so now um, I'm thinking that um, is that kind of what uh, get me in tech is now? Because uh, that's essentially that's what people are uh, usually missing. They may ha have the mindset yeah. of the wrong information. So is that kind yeah. of uh, your strategy now is like, well, I want to know what, what is your strategy for like how you've been able to build, especially like this mm -hmm. year when it's not so much of the a uh, surge in the market of uh, rising back up, but now it's just more stabilized. How are you mm -hmm. continuously building that $2.5 million portfolio for this year? And then what are you also also teaching with Get Me In Tech? Okay. Yeah, so for the most part, so when it comes, like, I haven't traded any of this year. Like, this year, like, because I, mean, I think I'm at the point now, like, I don't have to trade because I feel like my I'm comfortable with my portfolio is that I can just put money in here. I'm making enough income where I can just, like, let money here sit. So I'm in that crypto, like Ethereum, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Uniswap. I'm really like in the big three. I'm not really messing with the altcoins or anything like that. Cause at the end of the day, I still feel like I'm I'm a long term type of guy. Like I yeah. care for the I, I don't really care for the quick gains anymore. Like first when I was trying to build capital and just really make money. Oh yeah, I was all in. I was playing with the penny stocks and everything. <laughs> but now it's just like I'm more so just like maintaining and building or more so building long term wise and stuff like that. And so how Get Me In Tech actually um, was brought about. So this kind of goes to my brand. Um, I was on Twitter. I was always kind of like putting out like free game, like how to get into the tech industry, how I was able to get into the tech industry at the age of 19, what routes I took, everything. And so everyone's just like my DMs. Just really, I know because at the time on Twitter, I used to tweet BS. Like I used to be one of those trolls on, <laughs> on Twitter. 
And so I was like, man, and, um, at the time, Ari, I think I think everyone knows Ari. Yeah. Um, she was like, Tay, she was like, you notice, like, whenever you talk about finance and tech, your tweet always take off. I was like, do it. She was like, yeah. She was like, tweet something about tech right now. So I was like, I'm going to make a thread. I made a thread. I think it had about, like, 15,000 retweets and about 40,000 likes. I was like, all right, I'm taking it serious. I'm all like, I'm really gonna really start expanding on finance, tech, all of this. And when that, when that blew up, it was basically, I think, a thread on, um, like, just pretty much my journey, how I got to the tech industry and stuff like that. And it's really blew up. And people just started DMing me, hey, do you got any consultations? I was like, no, nah, I don't do consultations. At the time, I'm just DMing everybody back. I was like, you need to start doing consultations. I was like, I don't feel right charging for information. She was like, it's not your information you charge for, it's your time. Mm-hmm. I was like, Okay, that that makes sense. I'm spending 30 minutes, 45 minutes to do this. Let me let me do this. So I started doing it. I was getting six, seven consultations a day. Like I, at the time, I was charging like I think $150 for consultations. Wow. So I'm probably making a thousand dollars a day just talking on the phone. And so what I noticed, like everyone had the same exact questions. So I was questions. like, uh, right, let me create, let me create a blog. Let me create, you know, keep making threads. Cause you know, at this point, I'm like, I really hate being on the phone. So I started making blogs, you know, frequently asked questions. I do that. And so when people come to my um, DMs, they be like, hey, you know, you got any consultation? You know, um, I want to talk about this. I'm like, uh, you know, here's my blog. I, you know, I talk about a lot of this here. Here's my um, pen tweet. Look at that. You know, that's where all the information is at. They come back, yeah, but I still want to book one with you. I was like, okay, cool. I get on the phone with you for an hour. So get on the phone, just talk. And it's they really, like, it was just really like, they're more so like, I want like your story, like what made you do that? It's, that, it's kind of like with the stuff to ask. They still kind of ask me about like you know security, like how you do that. But it was like more so me that that was interested in. And so I was like, all right, cool. Like you know, I don't mind doing that. And so after I just really I like I started getting really busy with everything else, like I, my other business, like real estate and stuff. Like it started kind of taking off. I was like, I don't have time to talk on the phone every day. And I was like, I'm gonna build like a tech program for them. So I ended up doing that. Uh, pretty much teach them all the technical skills. I have a career service team, so they help them with resumes, LinkedIn revamps, pretty much teach them how to set, uh, negotiate salaries, how to interview um, and technical well, technical interviews and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, I'd rather do this because then it's about the same price. I went up on my price on consultation, like 250 So now this course is like 197 now. So it's like you're getting all this and you have constant access and I have a Discord group chat. So you have any courses, anything like that. Now you're still paying for the same price, but now you have way more information. You have way more stuff to kind of go into versus just talking to an hour. Now you can just talk to me anytime on the Discord chat, whenever I'm in there, anything like that. You have any technical questions, you have anything like that. And I just pretty much do that. And they're just like a one-time fee that they pay. Like most people have like Discord memberships and stuff like that monthly. It's just, it, oh, that's included within like the um, actual course. And so uh, I did a soft release and December, I think December or January, and I think I made like fifteen thousand dollars in like thirty minutes. And I was like, "What the hell?" Like I didn't, I did not expect this to go as well at the time. I was like, "Oh, like this shit is re- like this is real." So I started like taking it, um, like you know, I started like, "All right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna really just kind of like get into it. I'm gonna really take my time with it." And I'm also doing a revamp right now. Um, that I hire a hire a course auditor because I want to ultimately license this out to high schools because I know I didn't really have the chance to do anything like this in high school. I didn't know anything about tech. So I'm revamping the program to where it's more attracted to high school students as well, too. So I'm trying to go into the license game with that. And so when I saw that, I was like, all right, I, give me a tech. I really see people really want to get into like the tech industry. So now I'm pretty much going to have like a complete outline, like, you know, anything you want to do in tech, you want to be able to go to get me in tech and go here. And I'm also going to put it in schools as well, too, because now we get to the point you don't have to go to college to learn any of this stuff. Like most, you know, college is people are starting to realize college is not it's, it's a scam. Like, no, I'm not going to say it's a scam. It's 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 worth more than what you're getting out of it. And, you know, people are starting to notice that. And don't get me wrong, like, you know, teachers, lawyers, doctors, I hey, commend you go to school. Cause I don't want anyone just working on me, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so, um, I did that and, um, I just, I get in schools cause most people don't even have the money for it or they don't understand, like, you know, to have resources and stuff like that. And if you get into school and the school is paying for it, you just take this, you get out of school at 18, 
you got a potential to make seventy five, eighty thousand dollars straight out of high school. Yeah. And that's kind of like my that's kind of the route I want to go with this. See, the I, I love this because see, typically I'm not an advocate of I'm not saying I'm not an advocate of nine to fives, but mm-hmm. generally speaking, not just, 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 <laughs> just <laughs> I'm not. But just in the sense of like um with tech. Cause the, and it just kind of goes back to what you were saying. Cause tech is like one field that's, it's like relative to everything else in every other you know industry. It's new. So just because there's so much opportunity with this, because right now I think obviously there's like the reason a lot of tech, you know, people that get into tech make a lot of money is because of supply and demand. There's not a lot yeah. of people that are actually in this industry. So the, mm-hmm. the if you go, to, if you're a Facebook engineer, if you're you know one of these engineers for startups, tech engineer for a startup, you're getting paid, you know, well into six figures a lot of the time yeah. because of supply and demand. And until really like m- until coding becomes like a a, a universal language in terms yeah. of like, it's something that's like you grow up learning and it's just like a, mm-hmm. it's almost like talking English. Yeah. Until it gets to that point. That's when it's still it's always going to be in that demand because people. Yeah. It's so far fetched for so many people still right now. So what you're doing right now, I'm not surprised at all that you made fifteen thousand dollars in 30 minutes because there's I, there's so much opportunity in there because it's like, man, people, people, people can see like, dang. A lot of people are actually getting into this industry and not even having to go to school. So you recognizing that opportunity to actually, you know, the fact that you were actually, you know, you went to school, but you saw, OK, you actually don't need to go to school to actually do some of these things. And you yeah. create <laughs> but but let yeah. me ask, though, because obviously you you that, that was the first thing you said. You said that you was a security engineer. And so obviously you're still working in nine to five. Yeah. This dude is a, you know, 24 year old <laughs> uh, or 20, sorry, 25 year old millionaire. <laughs> Um, probably going to be, you know, just or just cross a million dollars in revenue for the year in mid mid, you know, or end of July. So why are you actually still working <laughs> in nine? Question. <laughs> That's I've been I've been I couldn't wait to ask you this. Why are you actually still working on nine to five? I love what I do. That's basically put it said. I love what I do. Straight up. Like I. Yeah, I, I love what I do. And that's that's a great thing about it. Like for my nine to five income, I invest it like i don't even touch it <laughs> i don't know when last time i actually touched my nine to five income i just <laughs> i invest it all and yeah that's really what it comes then i get you know free health care i still get yeah. that 401k match hey I, I it really comes boils down i really love what i do like yeah. that like everyone like so many people ask me that like bro why are you still working I, I i genuinely love working in security <laughs> so that's that's really what it is like so, lately i've been kind of like i kind of get up i'm like man I'm like working a day. I, I really could just quit. <laughs> so it, it's starting to kind of it's starting to kind of get there. Oh, man. But overall, it, it's probably gonna take me a year before I just really quit though. And also the stock options that I got too. So I, oh, I got I got I got a, 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 a nice chunk of stock options that I, I just can't let go right now. <laughs> I gotta let that be as far leave. <laughs> yeah. So and, and, I'm letting that be. Especially because you, if it's a startup, you're probably one of the early, um, you know, people in there. So obviously, if, if they go public at one point, then you know it could be you don't oh, want to miss out. Public. So yeah, they are public. so they they're public already. Oh, they are. So public. yeah, they they um actually went public about a month ago. Oh okay. yeah. So yeah, so but if what if it's sold for years, but sort of thing about the stock is I got the stock at fifty dollars, mm-hmm. and and a lot of people got way cheaper than that. It's at one hundred and three dollars now. Oh, so, wow. so you double, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it doubled. So my stock options double. Well, my RSU is double. I ain't so. mad at it. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, most people. The thing is, you, you. That's why I said, and this is why tech is so different because it's like you are actually getting a piece of the pie of this company. Yeah. It's like, bro, anybody. If I go, we're both engineers, but we're not tech engineers. I'm a civil engineer. Marlon's mechanical engineer. Mm. Man, if I go to any. Civil engineering company, I'm not getting a piece of the pie because a lot of these companies, they're already so established. It's like, look, we could replace you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so there's there's a lot of people that do what you do. There's not a lot of people that do what you what you do, security engineering. So I'm, mad, yeah. I'm not mad at it. And that was the biggest thing, man. It was like, man, and that's and people don't realize a lot of people become millionaires because they work in the tech, the, the yeah. stock. <laughs> like it's a lot of people that become like this thing. Like you, you have people that get half a million dollars in like compensation like base like their base salary may be like $160,000 they may get a sign on bonus for maybe $80,000 and probably get $250,000 $300,000 worth of stock wow and you know 
and then think about this you'll probably get like facebook stuff like that yeah. yeah it don't move as much but if you go get that same thing from a startup company and they ipo you're a millionaire sure. <laughs> you're a millionaire like that's a lot of people become millionaires off stock and stuff like that like and then like so in the tech industry they have the thing called golden handcuffs so it's like the pay is so good the stock is so good you want to leave but you can't like the, the money like they have you locked in like so they do like over four year business like say for instance if i get two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in stock i'll get that over the course of four years but what they do is they do quarterly refreshers as well too so you'll get like you know quarter come they'll give you um i think go twenty twenty thousand dollars in stock here you go here, nice job nice performance and it's just like damn i'm expecting this every quarter i can't leave <laughs> so you know what i mean it's like you get in a stock and the stock it's a tech company so the stock is going to go up yeah. like facebook google salesforce uh them they ain't going amazon they're, they're not going anywhere that yeah. stock is going to always be there yeah. so it's just like it it's really hard to leave and that's kind of what my situation is now <laughs> it's hard to leave i just don't want to leave like all that stock on the table so yeah. yes sir now i love your your response to that because a lot of people may have different reasons but if, as long as you truly just enjoy what you do that much that you would just do it and the money's like a bonus like just the like the money your salary for instance them giving you that you said i don't even touch that money because I, I make money off everything else if you can be okay with just having that type of mentality or that, that type of lifestyle saying I'm working just because I truly just love doing it and the money is just a, like a bonus add on, then that's like when I'm like fully on board with the nine to five being like something that you can just maintain or keep for whenever you want to. But at the same time, always keep in mind that if you ever do want to just decide, I don't feel like getting up today, you still have that choice. And that's the whole purpose <laughs> of us trying to achieve financial freedom is to having yes. the choice and the option to say if I want to go to work or not. If I love what I do, you can, you're can you more than welcome to continue going. But if I don't, if, I, if there ever comes oh, yeah. a day where I don't want to go, I can always leave. And it's just it's the freedom of having the option to do so. Yeah. And that's actually what happened in my last job because I almost went full-time entrepreneur. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys was following me on social media or not. But um, the last company I was at, that was trying to like, I, it was like certain stocks I could and could not buy. They made me sell Ooh, like ten thousand dollars worth of AT and T stock. Really? So yeah, so that's dividend. Yeah, they uh, they, they went to my this. portfolio. Yeah, that's that's so, a huge <laughs> difference. Now, if, if my company is preventing me from doing what I want to do yeah. outside of it, now nah, it really yeah. issue. <laughs> and so that's what happened. So um, that was at the time that was like, uh, like we don't really want you doing like you get me in tech business. Like we don't want you talking about financial literacy. Yeah. So yeah, man. Like they had find my website and everything. Like that was I think I stayed there for like six months because again I love what I do, but it was like I was still making money. But I was like, what really crossed it? They was like, oh, we just noticed you have AT and T stock. We're selling it. It's ten thousand dollars worth of AT and T stock plus the dividends. So I'm like, damn, dividends too. Come I'm on, quitting. man. I'm no, I'm out. Out. Yeah, that's so a wrap. That I understand that managing and stuff like that. It's like getting permission, but you know, getting permission to go buy certain stocks. But because you see, I'm holding a certain stock, and you're like, "Oh no, you gotta sell that." It's time for me to go. So after that, I think I kept making compliance. I was like, "Hey, so if I can't do this, I'm gonna leave." So it was just one day. I had got the phone. Uh, I was talking to my manager, and I was just like, "I did out of nowhere. Like I had no plans to quit. And I was just like, I quit, and that was it." <laughs> I, 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 I was like, I quit. In and, casual Tay fashion. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> I, I, I quit. Like, Bro. I, I don't work anymore. <laughs> but that's, and, you know what they call that? They call it, that's what they call FU money. Bro, <laughs> that's like, yo, like, I don't need this. <laughs> yeah, it was literally like, we were in a meeting, like, it was legit, like a, a team meeting. And I was just like, I quit. I can see it too. And I emailed them. I was like, yeah, you know, just due to like, you know, the past, you know, events that happened, I, you know, I don't really feel like this is going to be a fit for me. Um, I wish this was like explained to me at the beginning that this, you know, potentially could happen that you guys have to, because they didn't tell me any of this, like anything at all. And so at the time, I was, because at the time I was already thinking about quitting anyways. And so I had, another, I had like a few other job offers. And like the other place, I would tell them straight up, like I have this, I do this business, and I do this on social media. And it was like the company I'm at now. That was like, oh, we love it. Come on. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. I get to do what I love. Y'all encourage me to do this, and I get to make money, and y'all giving me stock. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> no so, 
So yeah, that's what happened with that. <laughs> Man, I love it. I love it. So <clears throat> I want to briefly, because we don't want to go too long, but I wanted to touch on some, because I know you mentioned you had some real estate um, mm-hmm. as well. You invest in the watches um, mm-hmm. and, and, and those kind of things too. And I, we didn't even touch on the rental car, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can't we can't hit on everything, but in t- what 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 made Sounds you actually like want part to, two to me? <laughs> right. <sure. laughs> what made you actually want to get into um uh real estate and then also investing into watches? Because that's I mean watches I, I mean uh, uh real estate is you know easy to understand as far as like obviously cash flow and those kind of things, but like mm-hmm. you know but you were doing really well obviously in, in stocks and everything else. What made you want to diversify it? At, that's you just say the diversification. Right. Like I, I tell people all the time, like like I'm I'm familiar with real estate. I always try to like even on social media, I don't really give like real estate advice because there's people that know way more than me. I just share my experiences with it. Right. Um, for the most part, I just I know people that's really big into the real estate industry, and they helped me along the way. So <laughs> I wish I could just take all the credit and say, oh, I did this. But no, I, I really had people in mind. That's the power of networking. Like I had people that can help me teach me stuff. I mean, I, I definitely get it. I understand it. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, it, no, I'm not ignorant towards, you know, real estate and stuff like that. I definitely know what I'm doing. But as far as like me going out, trying to go give advice, I, I don't do that. Because <laughs> people, hey, can I set a conversation call for real estate? Uh, this person is way better. I, <laughs> yeah, can yeah. I did. I can tell you what I did to get into real estate, but my journey is probably going to be completely different from you because this man it's still so much I don't know about real estate. And like I know Gene, he's like, because he was. I was just telling him about like my like my tax situation stuff like that. He's like, you need to buy more real estate, man. Yeah. <laughs> so ten thirty one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's that's kind of what I'm doing next year, 2022. Uh, I'm planning on buying more real estate. And so, you know, I have people like that. Brandon, uh, Madhu, uh, Brandon Jones, be on there. Oh, yeah. So I, I have like people like that. You know, if I have any type of questions and then Portia, she stays out here. If I have any questions, I can go to them. And every question I have, they have an answer to it. So <laughs> so I, I have a really great team or really like great people, like network of people that I can kind of go to if I have like any situation, any problems. And I also have a great relationship with my contractor. So yeah. like he like so oh I didn't even talk about that as well too. So I invest with my contractor and he probably brings me in around like twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a month just like off his the investments he do. So yeah. I invest with him a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We can't we can't even get into all of that, but like that's that <laughs> I'm gonna say it again. Getting complacent. <laughs> but you know what, you know, you know it's crazy though, because a lot of people they're they're heal they're they I can't talk, they'll hear that and it's like, man, okay, you gotta understand that because we all because we talk we're heavy into real estate, we own properties, we flip houses, but one thing we always tell people is that when you get into real estate, it's like you either gotta have like one or two of the three things it's either you know the money the time or the not or the hustle or the knowledge right so you got to have something to offer somebody and it's like you might you yourself probably didn't have the time or the necessarily the the, the knowledge that other people will have it, to exactly. get into it but you had the money so exactly. you know that, <laughs> that that is valuable to a lot of other people and so that's you know you could end up partnering like you say you invest with your contractor all these other things so it's like that's a really just a smart move on yourself. And and honestly, man, the best reason for you and your situation is just really like that. Like like Gene said, the tax situation, depreciation, yeah. man, get you some properties, yeah. man. You you gonna you make a million dollars yeah. this year? You might have to pay a, a dime in taxes. Yeah, <laughs> and that and that's 2022. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> 2022, I'm definitely buying way more property. Like that's that's kind of like that's really gonna be my focus. Like I really want to get into like the real estate game. Like I really want to be in it. Like I want to be like, hey, I'm real. I well, I, I guess I am a real estate investor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to be able to, like you know really have be comfortable have conversations with somebody. Like just really like short selling like like i really want to be like in it in it like i don't want to just be like oh i'm buying a rental property and i'm holding it like i want to get into the flipping house i want yeah i want to know it like i want to know the ins and outs of it and that's that's kind of like how i am like i I work on stuff gradually but like once i kind of like knock something down knock one industry down i'm going to the next one and i'm i want to completely learn it (laughs) and 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 this is so crazy because it's like i always think of because you had just is kind of transitioning but you mentioned like the watches um mm-hmm. and, and you know what that actually does for you in terms of networking powers right and i always mm-hmm. think of like because grant cardone i'm not sure if you're familiar with grant cardone oh yeah. yeah yeah i love grant yeah <laughs> you know people hate him people yeah. hate him but i like no. him <laughs> yeah me too i love him too 
and one thing he, you know, he always talks about is like using cash flow to buy stupid stuff, right? In terms of like uh, the uh, liabilities, like his Richard Millie's, the APs, all those kinds of things, right? And it's like, I mean, I never even thought of like the whole, because I always thought of him buying like those things as just like him buying those things. But now that you kind of talk about like what it actually does for you and networking, I had never even thought of the capabilities. And it's like, Especially if you're buying them using other assets, it's not like you're trading your exactly. time to go buy that watch that or that exactly. supercar or whatever. That's crazy, man. That's and crazy. the thing about this, so I actually have on my my Rolex. Come on, Rolex. Really. <laughs> so, I bought, so no, no, like let me out. I bought this watch like nine days ago for twenty one thousand dollars. It's now worth twenty three thousand dollars. It's been nine days. Wow. So it, it, it goes up and like it's literally wearing cash on your wrist. Like it, <laughs> yeah. you literally. If I if I ever just went broke, like my I think my watch collection is like forty five thousand dollars right now. So if I just ever just really got into a bind, I go sell my watches. Yeah. But I don't plan on like that'd be the last thing to go. I sell everything else when I sell my watches. <laughs> but yeah, watches like so that's it's really like two three investments in one. You get the power of networking. Yeah. You get to hold your money, and if you get the right watch, they go up in value at the minimum. It at least going to hold the value. And so why are you going to go? Because if you notice, like a lot of people in real estate wear Rolexes and things yeah, like that. Yeah. And real estate, it's a relationship type of thing. And you see someone to watch. And that's literally everyone I meet, they're in real estate, they have to watch. They're like, oh, that's nice watch. What you do? Well, I'll do this. And I kind of dabble in real estate too. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm real estate too. So the dude that built the skyscrapers. Um, yeah. So I actually met the guy that um, built one of the apartment buildings out here and sold it to uh, JP Morgan. Really? And I like your watch. Cool, let's talk. He's like, oh yeah, I sold this building by the way. What? He was like, Yeah, I sold a couple of these buildings to the JP Morgan. I was like, What the f-? like <laughs> off my watch? <laughs> so like, it's crazy. Like I've met so many people just, oh, I like your watch. And cause at that time it's like, oh, he has to be doing something to be spending twenty thousand dollars on a watch. And don't give me Rolex, you get a, a nice Rolex for like six, seven thousand dollars yeah. and things like that. So you don't have to get like just a stupid expensive one, but those are the ones that typically go up in value and stuff like that. And when people see them, it's like, oh, what do you do? Especially like in you like a upscale spot or something like that, they're automatically gonna assume you do some type of business mm-hmm. and oh, let's change contact. Like I've made, I've definitely made all of my money back from my car for my watches. like just off making connections and stuff like that. So. I bet. And that's what I really want to hit into, like before we close this up, because you, people do need to understand that there are levels to like the, our financial freedom journey. And I, I like to reflect mm-hmm. back on that for us, especially like with this podcast, all mm-hmm. leading up to like uh, more recently, it's all been about like living, like a delayed gratification mentality, not necessarily buying all the flashy things because you need to save up the money in order to build the businesses and investments. But once you have done that, that's when you can take to go to the next level because now it was one thing just to be building up like building up the, uh, the cash flow for savings and investments for businesses and stuff but at the next level how do i continue to scale how do i continue to expand my network to the next level of people that are the ones that are selling these businesses or selling these buildings to jp morgan and stuff like that that mm-hmm. so now it comes with a level of okay Maybe I need to um, invest in your personal appearance. Invest in the personal appearance. Exactly. Invest in the personal appearance because now that's going to start conversations that's going to put me in the door with other people. That's going to get me to the next level of multi millions. That's going to get me to the next level of like uh, having those conversations with billionaires. And it's just, it's levels to it, but you need to start where you are at the same time because you weren't always, you weren't, you didn't always have a Rolex and a McLaren, but now you're at that level to where it makes sense for you. It's crazy. And this year and this like this year was the first year. Like I've always been like networking people. It was like more in the tech industry. Now I'm networking with people in the business world. And man, mm-hmm. when I say like this year has been like my most successful year and it was all off relationships. Like and like when I say like your net worth is your network, like your net yeah, your net worth is your network. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's 100 percent true. Because <laughs> the thing about it is, it's like if I don't know something, I know somebody that like that. Nine times out of ten, I know someone that's going to do it, and they're going to put me in the right direction. And by that advice alone, it's probably going to I'm probably make fifty, sixty thousand dollars off that advice alone. Versus me going in to go lose my money, go do this. And it's been a couple of times like the people I kind of talk with, they saved me from losing money. Yeah. And so it's like, dang, like if I would have never met you. I would have lost twenty five, thirty thousand dollars here, but because I met you and you kind of gave me your previous experience on something like this, I ain't lose that money now. 
So it's it's definitely like it's it's it's, a, it's great. <laughs> it's definitely I always try to tell people network, and and thing about people I always ask like, well, how am I supposed to network with these type of people? And like you just said, either have knowledge and time to do something that they can't do, or have capital. Like yeah. that's that's yeah. pretty much what it goes down to. <laughs> you gotta have more. You gotta have something. You gotta be a hustler. You gotta do. So you gotta have something to offer them because, you know, at the, that time they don't have time. Yeah. And most of the time, people that's doing stuff like that don't really have time. So you have time. Learn up. Do something. Hustle. Boom. Now you're talking with those people. Exactly. Cause there's been a few people I've pretty much talking talk with because like now I don't have a lot of time. They got time. So cool. Let's chop it up. So yeah. let's do. Let's make something happen. Man, I love it. I love it. It's so crazy because I always, I never knew the power of a watch till today. That's, yeah. that's that's crazy, man. Because I crazy, man. <laughs> I always listen to, uh, I don't know if you Ocho Cinco, he's crazy, but he always yeah. talks about you know, because he, he he's he's wild. He would always say, like, I don't need to go buy a Rolex and then I just go buy the George eight dollar watch from Walmart. And, you know, yeah. they already know I got money. But it's yeah. like he's he it's already different, they, though. It, it, it's yeah, different because they, they they know it's him. Name. They know yeah. him. He is the yeah. brand. Like, yeah. but your watch speaks for you too. So it's like, man, that's crazy. I'm just thinking about it so differently now. And it's like, that's definitely something that I gotta uh, look into at that, you know, when it time when it comes time to do that, because that's like yeah. that that networking man is a game changer. And if if it if it, if it really is <laughs> that simple, then yo, I'm telling, I'm telling man, if you ever get a watch, I kid you not, go to an upscale bar, go to the bar, sit there, yeah, and it's gonna be some guy that's sitting on the side <laughs> of you that does some type of business. He's gonna see your watch. He's like, oh, that's a nice it. watch, man. Yeah, cool. That's I I kid you not, man. The amount of conversations I've had because someone saw my watch is amazing <laughs> so i'm telling you just try it out one day <laughs> yeah, man i love it i love it i love it so cool 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 we're gonna wrap up the podcast then with our last segment so this is the fast fast five we'll pretty much ask you five questions and you'll answer them in 10 seconds or less and uh we'll, we'll wrap up the podcast that way so i'm gonna take the first one and then we'll alternate <clears throat> so uh first question what does success mean to you uh when i'm able to put someone else in the same situation I am or ele- help elevate someone else's me that's how I judge my success if I can help someone else become successful then I'm successful because it's easier for me to do it yeah. but if I'm really if I really am successful I should be able to do that and help everyone else do it or help the people close to me do it as well too which I have I have like my six closest friends right now they're all made six figures this year nice. <laughs> yeah my lot my lot of brothers actually What's up, oh man. yeah. <laughs> game with you. Um, question number two: What is your favorite money or business book? Um, Building Generation of Wealth. Uh, who is it? He's he's a lawyer. Uh, the book is right. Let me go. It's right here. Right here. Your background. I know there's a bookshelf back there. Yeah, it is. It is a bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Generation of Wealth. This is wait. Is it? Uh, there you go. Uh, it's right yeah. there. Favorite book. Third edition by can't see this. I don't know who the author is. Yeah, by Lafoy Orlando Thomas the Third Sy. Great okay. book. It's it's like fifteen dollars on Amazon. Teach you how to build a business. Teach you about the stock market. Teach you how to buy a house. Teach you yeah. about different mortgages. It pretty much everything that's cool. It's in there. Yeah, it's great. I love it. Mm-hmm. Dope. Dope. So, and I feel like I already know what you what your answer would be to this question. But would you rather have a thousand dollars a week for life or a million dollars today, and why? A million dollars today? I can just be lazy yeah. and just go dump it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I real estate, you know, don't have to pay taxes on it. You know, put it in real estate, buy a few multi-families, let it sit there, bring in that cash flow. I'm yeah. good. I don't need a thousand dollars a week. That's that's I still have to because at that point I'm blowing it. Like if I'm getting a thousand dollars a week, I'm probably blowing it anyways. And yeah, for sure. For sure. And by the way, a thousand a thousand dollars a week for life. People that's not, it's just forty eight thousand dollars a year. Yeah, and, <laughs> and and even let's let's even think about this. Like especially with the way the government's printing money in fifty years, I would be mad if I took a thousand dollars because that that's gonna be yeah. like ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, forty eight thousand dollars a year. Man, how long does it take for a million? I don't even feel like doing a math. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Question number four. If you could go back and change anything about your journey, what would it be? I don't think I would change anything. I, Cause I feel like I, I feel like I did everything right. Yeah, I, I feel like I did it like yeah, I feel like I did everything right. I mean, I would probably um. I don't think there's nothing I would change. Yeah, I don't think because I 
because I pretty much I play like so when I turned 18 so I have like this journal I still have I had it for like six since I was 18 I had it I wrote down everything that I wanted to do how I was going to do it and I had a plan B for my plan B so it was like probably like a hundred pages full of like goals how I'm gonna finish it if this happens then I'm gonna take this route and I'm gonna do this to get back on track like I was literally like planning my entire life at 18 so I was, I was always, I've always kind of like knew exactly what I wanted to do, but you know, I didn't know how I was going to get there. And so that's why I kind of did that. So yeah, I still have that book to this day. Like I actually thought about like, actually probably like trying to get it published or something like that. Like, oh, this is like the route, this is what I did. I don't know how I would do that or kind of put it like a blueprint, but yeah, man, it literally have every step, everything I've ever done. <laughs> man, that's dope, man. Has, so has it like kind of played out at the same way that you envisioned at 18? Yeah. There was only one incident that knocked it off. It was the incident. It was, I couldn't really, uh, like, it was, I couldn't really control it, I guess. Uh, I ended up being in the hospital for a certain amount of time, so that ended up uh, yeah, knocking it off. Nah, this was, uh, so on the Xavier podcast, I talked about it. Uh, I was kind of going through depression, and, mm. um, mm. yeah, so that happened. I had a suicide attempt, and I was Damn. in the hospital for, like, a month or something. So that kind of knocked it off, but I got back on track, so. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's dope. Have a part two. This is <laughs> we got so much more we could have covered today. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, I'm, I, I'm glad. I'm glad that worked out. I thought you was gonna yeah. say, you know, that you had a baby or something. I was like, yo, nah, nah, <laughs> oh, no, no kids, no kids, no kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, I'm playing. I'm playing. No kids. <laughs> uh, all right, cool, man. Well, uh, last question: where where could people find out more about you? Uh, yeah. So follow my TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Tayon Tech. Um, Twitter, I you probably get all the game you want on Twitter. That's why I post all the game. Instagram, I'm just entertaining people. <laughs> I'm entertaining people with knowledge as well too. But you know, TikTok, same thing. Entertaining people with knowledge um, for the most part. Uh, probably seen a couple of my TikToks around, if not. <laughs> and my website uh, for my blogs is www.tayontech.io. And if you're interested in getting to the tech industry, get me in tech.com. <laughs> there y'all have it there y'all have it that's it for this episode of the money monopolizers podcast new episodes will be released every thursday and will be available on apple Podcasts, spotify and youtube just search money monopolizers wherever you listen to podcasts we hope you learned <clears throat> something of value today and if you did we'd appreciate if you rated us five stars and left us a review on apple Podcasts. you can find out more info about us on twitter at the monopolizers or ig at money monopolizers we post informative content on there that you can get so be sure to check that out and share but until then we're out of here you've been listening to the money monopolizers podcast helping you take control of your financial destiny to learn more about how you can be in control of your money visit moneymonopolizers.com we'll catch you next time when alex and molly share more personal finance and wealth creation tips with you now it's time Take that.